Has it ever happened in your sketchbook that you have a cute dog, an even cuter pig with his bird friend, but the spread is just a giant bummer overall because you were overly tired and kept painting when you should have stopped? No? Well, maybe it's just me. Hi, I'm Alma, and this week I fought a cold and I persevered with this YouTube video anyway. I did it for you. You're welcome. But really, if I'm being honest, I did it for me. Why? because my creativity and my joy really matter. Joy is my priority, which is why I painted not one, but two cute pigs. They did make me feel so much better. And of course your joy and creativity matter too. So I hope that this video brings you a little joy and a lot of inspiration with your art projects. This week I'm sharing how I made these two pages more harmonious with a wash of, spoiler alert, <gasps> Opera Rose. We've got some time lapse footage and we'll see how much more I have to say. I don't even know, but thanks so much for being here. Enjoy the video. So I've said this so many times that I absolutely love Pexels. This guy with the long neck and the smile and the blissed out look, just adorable. And he reminds me of my grand dog Maddox. So I want to just say something too about reference photos. Reference photos are the best because I can look at things and, the, you know, photos can just make me feel something, maybe something that I wasn't feeling before, you know, like, like I said, you know, I've been sick this week and it's super great to be able to just scroll through some things that make you smile or make you laugh or inspire you. And so I'm a big proponent of reference photos. And of course, you know, using our imagination is amazing too. And that's why we have one to use it and to enjoy it. But anybody who says that, you know, painting off a reference photo is, you know, not as creative or whatever, I have to disagree. Okay, so at this point in this particular sketch page, things start to really fall apart. I shouldn't have painted green. I was tired and it wasn't quite finished. You know, I'm still working on her face, but I just decided, oh, I'm just going to paint the background. And then things just went from bad to worse when I thought, oh, I'm just going to put in some abstract trees. I mean, it just, none of it worked. So I'm going to move on to cute pig number one, and then we will get into just some simple things on how I corrected the spread. Ugh, I hate the word correct. How I made the spread more pleasing to me. So this is day two of being uh, housebound. And I'm, I want to be creative, but I'm, fairly tired and I wanted kind of that quick gratification. So I got out my Posca pens and I thought, I'm just gonna start here and just see where it goes. And if I have to go lay down, so be it. So I, you know, again, it's the cute pig. You know, I'm looking at a, at a photo of one and I can't put it here on the video for you because I actually got it from Pinterest and there are probably copyright issues. So. Trust me, this is how he was sitting and he was super cute and wanted to paint him. I wanted to continue with this happiness that I was feeling. It was making me feel really good. So at this point, I am telling myself, okay, let's stop, let's stop. But I, I you know, you get, get into this mindset, at least I do, where I want things to be finished. And it, I spent quite a bit of time on Pinterest looking for a cute side table that was really easy and quick. And I probably, uh, spent way too much time doing that, but I just thought, you know, I'm just gonna make one of the flowers I always make, the shape anyway, and turn that into a table. So I felt like that worked. And then I did stop. So I didn't finish the background, I walked away, and then the next day I came back, and here you see me using a very watered down gouache wash of Opera Rose, and it didn't, uh, alter the underpainting which is really great you know I was under the impression that oh if I add a bunch of water it's just gonna be a smeary mess and I was sort of prepared for that to happen and then it didn't happen so I I guess the trick here is I didn't overwork it I just put that watered down bit of opera rose on top of her jacket and then I felt like okay now I've got two cohesive things happening. I've got this chair and I've got this jacket that basically are essentially the same, you know, color, uh, in the same color family. So then it was pretty easy to make the background on the right-hand side really dark and then try to keep the one on the light 
on the right side, excuse me, a bit lighter. And I was just really happy with the inspiration I felt then. It just was easy to put some little pictures in the background and then just finish up the pig page. And I felt like, you know, I just wanted to keep it really simple and kind of doodly. And so that's what you see me doing here. And then as far as the right hand side, well, I wanted it to have kind of the doodly look. And actually I'm teaching a, t a class on Skillshare right now that incorporates illustration with some doodles. And so I thought, oh, I'll just use that, the techniques that I was showing in that class. And so that's what I'm doing here with the words and then just extending some flowers from that the words that sort of serve as a line of ground for her to stand on as well. For my last sketch for today, I'm going to share how I put this together because again, I can't show you the photo, the reference photo, because I got it from Pinterest, but there was a super cute photo of a pig that was looking at, at, it, at itself in the mirror. And so what I did was I cut it out, or you know, I saved the image to my phone and sent it to my iPad. And then in Procreate, what I did is I placed the image of the pig looking at itself in the mirror in a room that had a mirror and so that's what i used as the reference photo for this piece so i basically took two photos from pinterest and created sort of a composite image in procreate and i didn't draw it at that point or anything i just used the the photo the overall composite photo for my reference photo for this so you know again um, i started with just straight painting and when i was doing this i you know it, it's kind of strange when you're working from a reference photo because or maybe it was because i was not feeling good that my brain just couldn't understand how i could see the chair the, from that angle in the mirror but i mean that it, it was a photo of a real room so i painted it exactly as i saw it now, of course, it's not exact because the chair that I made in, in this painting actually was bigger um, in real life. So you're going to see me beef up this chair as this painting continues to get it you know, right. I mean, whatever that means, because ultimately what I love about art is that our brain will fill in the details. You know, our brain understands that there's this chair being reflected in the mirror and nobody except you know somebody who is really studying uh, our artwork is really going to see that it's it's a little bit off you know who cares it doesn't matter i was enjoying myself painting it it's in my sketchbook it makes sense to me and so i finally just you know gave it up i thought you know what what am i going to do scrap the page no you just keep going you know you learn from what you do and i really loved the color combination that I used and how I landed on this color combination is and this is sort of an approach that I've mentioned before in other videos that I often just pick the first color that speaks to me and I knew that I wanted to start off with my Posca pen just to do the rough you know kind of the idea on the page and then use that as a jumping off point so the first color that struck me was orange and so I love this way of painting where you can see, you know, the underpainting, the underline line work, the orange coming through. And I like that, you know, it smears a little bit with the gouache. And so you get a little bit of that smeary and messy quality. I like this approach because if I were to start, what was happening is when I was starting with initial pencil drawings is I was getting too precise you know like I wanted to stay in the lines and I didn't feel like it was helping me relax it was actually me actually making me a little more anxious so that's why I decided just to drop the pencil drawing and it really just serves my 
personality a little bit better to have things loose and fun and I'm hoping that my paintings get even looser as time goes on because sometimes I find myself still getting really uh, precise you know like for example the colored pencil lines in the chair I wanted the lines to match up perfectly in the mirror which you know I had to let that go too so it's just something I'm working on inside is just trying to have just a more relaxed attitude about the whole thing you know, I've been looking at so many of Matisse's paintings and he, he became much more childlike in his painting style as time progressed. And I love this quote by him, look at life with the eyes of a child, which is really how I am trying to see life much more every day that goes by, which is why I think I'm so drawn to the subject matter that, you know, that I've been drawing lately cute animals, you know, cute people, cute girls, um, and, and using a lot more doodles in my art. So a big thank you to you for sticking with me here to the end of the video. Thank you so much for subscribing if you do. Have a wonderful week. Happy creating.